Hi everybody, this is the Planet Earth here. How are you guys doing? So today, we're going to have a little conversation um, about anxiety disorder, depression, schizophrenia. Today's going to be an everything video. So I'm going to talk about it. So, what is anxiety? Um, what is depression? What is benzodiazepine? Etc. So let's talk about it, okay? Yes, everybody uh, wanted to know, like, everybody wants to know, like, what's going on. So I'm going to talk about it. Okay. I suffer from really bad anxiety. I've had panic attacks for years. It feels like you're going to die. It feels like you're short of breath. Um, it's a really bad feeling. Um, I, it's really hard to explain. But. It feels like you're going to die. It's really scary. What is a panic attack? A panic attack is a sudden release of adrenaline. Your heart rate goes extremely fast, extremely high, extremely quickly. So, everybody wants to know, am I still having panic attacks? Yes, I am. And it sucks. So, with, with the anxiety attacks, it feels like you're going to die without dying. It literally feels like you're going to die. Now, as for medication that is supposed to treat panic attacks, um, they are called benzodiazepines. And benzodiazepines are supposed to calm the, the central nervous system to the point where the anxiety attack dissipates. Now, I've been struggling with this for many years. I have panic attacks almost every single day. Most of the time, if they're not too severe, I'll just keep it to myself. I have a high heart rate. I just fight it. I just fight it. And I fight it. And then it just goes away after so long. Or maybe I'll take an, an Ativan and, and then it'll go away. It just depends on the day, time. Sometimes it happens in the middle of the night. Sometimes it happens in the middle of the day. Uh, sometimes it happens just randomly. It could happen any moment. They come on suddenly and they they disappear over time. They don't disappear immediately. Um, it usually takes like 10 to 20 minutes to calm a panic attack down. It's very scary. It is one of the scariest feelings in the world. And I feel bad for everybody that suffers through the anxiety. Now, what's triggering me lately and honestly is all this stuff that's going on in the world today all the violence and unnecessary killings and everything like that is just destroying my generalized anxiety it is how do i stop going to the emergency room for ekgs okay how to stop going to the er room for ekgs like you like getting your ekgs the little test strips on your heart right to make sure your heart's okay well, El Paso shooting is one of the prime examples. How would you stop going to the emergency room for EKGs? Well, let me let me explain something about the EKGs, okay? When I'm having chest pain, I usually will go to the ER room and get an EKG done. I also get a test called troponin test. The troponin test is pretty much an indicator if you're having heart troubles. Now, let me explain the difference between an anxiety attack chest pain, an ang angina chest pain, and an actual heart attack. My dad explained to me how bad he felt. These were not, these were the symptoms of an actual heart attack. And if you want to stay here to, to uh, let me explain, this is an anxiety trigger for a lot of people, okay? So right now there's seven people watching me. I doubt they'll stay. Um, probably be like two people watching me within the next ten minutes. But I'm going to explain in detail what a heart attack will feel like, okay? 
So let's do this. A heart attack is a cutoff of blood to a certain part of the heart, which would cause, for the most part, an irregular rhythm or a different type of rhythm. And that is what an EKG will usually pick up. Usually. There is usually markers on the EKG strips that will say, oh, well, this guy might have a blocked artery. Oh, this guy might have a blood clot within the arteries of the heart. There are usually signs and indicators. Some people turn pale. Some people experience dizziness that doesn't go away with rest. Sometimes it does, depending on if the heart muscle is really being destroyed at the time or not, or if it's a mild heart attack. Mild heart attack, you know, you have a clog, it's like 90%, 99% clog, you know, 98%, but there's a little bit of blood still going through. But a heart attack is different from an anxiety attack. They are similar in the sense of the fear that is produced from the anxiety that you get from having a heart attack, okay? But the, the difference is my dad told me is the chest pain is incredibly strong. The chest pain is extremely violent. Okay, so the chest well, let me let me show you, okay? Here's the heart. Sorry, I'm fat. So, here's the heart. When you are having real heart pain, okay? Yes, I do think benzos made my anxiety disorder worse. Yes. The, the heart pain right here, okay, it goes up because it is connected. The same nerves that are connected with the esophagus are connected with the heart at the same time, okay? So what ends up happening is when the heart is in trouble, there is a pain that is sent up to your jaw because the jaw muscle and bone and, and the veins are going straight up into your jaw. So you can feel the pain every time your heart is hurting from each each uh, pressure, each, each pulse. Your heart is hurting, so you feel a pain that goes into your left arm. At the same time, you're feeling that same pain in your jaw at the same time as you're feeling it on your left arm. And it usually throbs like a shoot, shoot, shooting. Ow, ow, ow. And it get really hurts every time it pulsates. It's hurting, constantly hurting, 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 hurting. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't release. It doesn't let go. So maybe sometimes it will, but it depends on how much you're working in your heart at the time you're having a heart attack. But usually you get, you can't capture your breath. You can't capture your breath. You can't capture your breath. So you're like, and, and then you start having chest pains here where your heart is, of course. But then you also start having pain radiating from your jaw. Usually it's the left side of the jaw, by the way. Sometimes it's the bow, but usually it's the left side of the jaw that has the heart. And because of the main veins going up into your head, you'll start feeling like lightheaded like, like this. And that is a real heart attack. Now, with uh, an anxiety attack, you feel almost all the same symptoms without the excruciating chest pain. Usually with the heart, usually, with the heart, massive heart attack, you usually get the signs of sweating. So, usually you get that sweating action, okay? You start breaking out in a real sweat all the way from your feet to your head, okay? It doesn't stop sweating, okay? You're, you're, you become pale as shit. You break out into a sweat. So any redness that like I have here in my cheeks would disappear with a real heart attack. You would turn completely pale. You might even turn a little bluish because your body is lacking the oxygen. Plus then you're going to start feeling lightheaded. And you're going to be like this and then dizzy. So you're, you might fall or something. But then you're also your heart is struggling. So if you look at your toes and you look at your feet, they might start turning purple. Um, some people that have heart attacks, you'll see the feet either turn completely white or purple. Like they physically turn color when you're having a real heart attack. 
because the body is now trying to save your organ, your heart muscle, and your vitals. It's keeping now your vitals, so it's pulling blood away from the extremities like your hands. So you might start feeling weak in your hands, and you start feeling weak in your feet, but then you can also see the color change in your feet. Instead of like a reddish, normal looking color, you're literally seeing purple in your toes because you're having a heart attack and also because the body is trying to save you while at the same time it's dumb because it's not killing the cholesterol plaque so the body is really stupid at the same time so at the same time if you really want to know if you're having a real heart attack look usually if it's not like an immediate death heart attack one of the slow ones look at your hands if they are turning purple or pink or blue in the left or the right, you're probably having a heart attack. If if you if, if, but if physically turning purple ish, like if it's turning purple, it's like you're cutting your circulation off. You're having a heart attack. Or if your face turns purplish or like a yellowish, purplish, most likely you're having an actual heart attack versus an anxiety attack, which will just turn you pale. But if you actually look during a panic attack, you look at your feet, if they aren't turning purple or pale, usually you're not having a heart attack, even if you're having chest pains. Because you're getting the oxygen to the, the furthest extremity from your heart. So that means your heart, even though it's scary as shit and it's pumping as fast as possible, your feet aren't turning different colors. So that means you're not lacking any actual blood flow to your body and your body's not pulling the blood into only your chest area and your lungs that gives you a few more minutes of life until you can get to an ER room where they can inject you with anti uh, plaque medication or they can put a stent or they can give you uh, some anti uh, pain medicine for the heart muscle itself um, or they can give you you know they're gonna give you a little bit of aspirin if you're not allergic to aspirin, and then they're going to give you that for the chest pain and to thin the blood out a little bit so it can go through the plaque a little bit. But then once they give you those clot bl uh, busting medications, it moves the plaque around and you're able to, and then the heart muscle receives blood again and you stop having a heart attack. Now, I am definitely scared of heart attacks, okay? They're scary. They do happen. You don't know when they're going to happen unless in the future... You can get like an EKG scanning machine yourself and see how much blockage you have yourself without having to go and do expensive machinery and all that bullshit. Maybe in the future our cell phones can prevent heart attacks to be, from be, happening in the first place. Okay, maybe in the somehow in the future cell phones will be able to just kill all the plaque in your heart. No, no questions asked. Just put it against your heart. And it does something that just kills all the plaque inside your heart and your body. And you have perfect cholesterol all the time. No matter how much junk food you eat. Perfect triglycerides. Perfect cholesterol. And I think that will happen within the next 50 years. In the next 50 years. Um, now if you're having an anxiety attack, usually you become a little clammy. But you don't usually get a cold sweat. Usually you start to feel very hot. But if it's cold outside... And it's cold inside your house or apartment and you're having a panic that you might break out in a cold sweat because it's cold and you're sweating because of the adre adrenaline. But usually if you're having a real heart attack, you'll see some different color in your feet. Your feet will turn purple um, usually if you're having like a heart attack, heart attack. Sometimes they don't, but I've my dad told me that his feet were turning colors right before he collapsed to the floor. Um, inside the ER room, um, his feet turned color as his heart attack was getting worse, and they were turning purplish, bluish, bluish to purplish. That means he wasn't getting any blood flow to his feet. That's a sign of a heart attack, not just an anxiety attack. So, if if you want to know the truth, to stop the EKG stress, get a stress echo cardiogram with dye. Do the dye. I know it's bad for you long term, but just do the dye. You'll see if there's any clogs. If there's no clogs, stop panicking. If there's clogs, get the proper medication to limit the effect 
uh, that clogs affecting your heart. Okay. Since your heart was normal, David. Since your heart was normal. You should be okay. I think you should be okay. Now, if you're having chest like chest pressure, a lot of the times the chest pressure is not your heart. I know it sounds stupid, but mo if it, it's not like an extreme pressure, of course, but like a mild, usually it's mild chest pressure usually is not your heart most of the time. Usually chest pressure is acid reflux. I know. It's stupid. I know. Phantophobia, fear. Dude, that, that is my worst, Alan. That is my worst, man. I have a fear of death. I don't like that fear. I have a fear of the process of death. Oh, Does that make sense? I have the fear of the process of death. But not the death itself, if that makes any sense. Like, I fear the process of the death, but I don't fear death afterwards, which is weird. I don't fear the death afterwards, I just fear the death process. Because we're all human and we're all going to die at the same time. We are going to die. All of us are going to die. That We can get that out of the story already. We are all going to pass away. The problem is, and this is what I'm trying to fight, is we need to live our best lives. Hello there, Matrix. We need to live our best lives no matter what. And that's the thing that sucks is because I'm scared of life, but at the same time, I want to live a normal life. But at the same time, I don't even want to go outside. I don't even want to go outside, which is very weird, but that's how I am. I don't want to die, okay? Honestly. I don't want to die. I don't want to get off this earth, okay? That's the truth. I don't want to go away. I don't want to go in heaven. Or wherever we're going. I want to live. That's the honest truth. But the, the way the things that are going on this earth right now. With all the violence. The shootings. The murders. The kidnappings. The raping. All that stupid shit man. Does not make me want to live on this earth. I can't not lock my doors. I can't go outside and just say hi to everybody. I can't go at night, ride my bike, drive my car, go to sleep in any parking lot because we live in a dangerous society in general. You can't sleep in your car. You can't sleep in your apartment. You have to be carrying a weapon because people, some people are dangerous. They, they shoot people, they rob people, they kill people. And that's not what I want for everybody on this planet. And that's what causes my panic attacks. I could be a good person at heart. But then the person next door could be a, a serial killer. And it's really sad. But that's how the earth is. That's how we are as humans. We are a naturally violent species. And it scares me. Why? Taking guns away is not going to stop the violence. I'm sorry, guys. Taking guns away from people is not going to stop the violence. Because if somebody is breaking... Look, if somebody is breaking into your house, the police are not going to be able to arrive by the time they break in your house. And if you are not loaded and ready to shoot, well, guess what? They're going to shoot you and your family. They're going to kill you. Especially if they don't want witnesses. And if you would have had a gun, you could have protected yourself, had those mother effers run out, or shoot them dead inside your apartment. That's what you need to understand about guns. You think the cops are going to be there for you within a couple of minutes. No, they're not. 
They have to get in their vehicles. They have to drive fast. They have to run red lights. It takes them a few minutes to get to your house. It takes them a few minutes, okay? They cannot protect you while that person is breaking in your house. God forbid you live out in the middle of nowhere. That's like 20 to 30 minutes before the sheriff shows up. By that time, anything could have happened. Had you had your gun on you, you could have shot them and, and not be in danger anymore. For you and your family, especially if you have children. That's what people don't get about guns. When most people that break into apartments or break into houses or whatever, they have guns or sharp ass knives. That's or or they have weapons like a crowbar or a uh, what's it called a baseball a baseball bat. Usually, most people break in. They have a gun. They threaten you. They tie you up. They threaten you. Where's your money? Where's your money? Where's the money? They might even pistol whip you a couple of times. Where's the money? Where's the money? You don't have the money. They shoot you. You keep saying this, Drew. Drew. Easy access to guns equals crime. But let me explain, Drew. If somebody breaks into your house, how are you going to protect yourself? Go. If somebody breaks your house right now, within five seconds, well, uh, five minutes, right now, okay? Right now, okay. Let's let's say right now, somebody's about to break in your house. What do you do? What are you going to do? You're going to hide in a room? What if they're coming in with a freaking gun? You're just going to hide? Drew, you're not understanding the situation. You can hate guns all you want, but at the end of the day, if you have a gun to protect yourself, you're more likely to survive being broken into. Why doesn't he get it? If somebody breaks into your house, the police are not going to be there in the time that you need access to your weapon to protect your family and yourself. Especially if you're in a remote area. They will not be there within five minutes. They might take 30 minutes to get there depending on how remote your area is. And even in the city, if you live in a dangerous city, it might take them 20 minutes to arrive at the scene. And by that time, they would have robbed you, taken all your shit, put it in their vehicle, and taken off or taken down the road and ran out. If you would have had a gun, you would have been able to shoot the, the, the intruder, kill them with your weapon, and that would have been it. And, and keep your life and keep your property at the same time. That's why they created the Second Amendment. Right to bear arms. That's what I'm saying. Harry Soccer, that's not very nice. Okay, go ahead, Ashley Lynn. Okay, gun advocates. Okay, first of all, Drew, you must be a Democrat. You listen to me and you listen to me carefully. Almost 100% of criminals get their guns illegally. Almost 100% of actual criminals get their guns illegally from criminals that bring them over the border. Oh my God, why don't you know that? They don't go through the legal process because as soon as they shoot, okay, as soon as they shoot, the bullet leaves a mark. The bullet is a very special. They can pin it to a legal gun that's been purchased at like a gun shop or a private cell. Jesus Christ. They get them illegally from arms dealers from Mexico. They sneak them across the border into the United States. The guns are unregistered. They're not legal, and that's how criminals use uh, to shoot usually people. That's what gangs do so they don't get caught, blah, blah, blah. They use illegal guns. Look at all the raids that go on. Okay, gun raids. They're called gun raids. The police do it sometimes. They find, like, hundreds of assault weapons, you know, Uzis, pistols. They're all illegal. None of them are legal and, may, and, and from the government or purchased legally. 
through like Smith & Wesson, their actual website, the manufacturer. Alan, I'm trying to give him some common sense. These guns are not purchased legally. They're purchased illegally from places like Mexico. They bring them, they smuggle them across the border illegally, and then they use those for crimes because they're not marked. They're not like, okay, like let me give you an example. When I purchased my firearm, I had to go through a legal process. I had to show them my state ID. I had to pay a little fee uh, to have my background check. Okay? I had to get the gun legally. It has a serial number. If I committed a crime with it, if I shoot somebody, if I shoot at a target, the police can identify the bullet with my gun because it's very specific. To every gun has a very specific point on shooting. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I've been trying to tell people. Most of these guns are not legally purchased firearms. 99% of them are not. Because who is in their right mind is going to have a legal firearm and just go, Oh, well, <laughs> let me go commit a crime. Bang, bang, bang. No. They're going to carry an illegal unregistered firearm that's not from the United States. That was not purchased in the United States. It was purchased from Mexico. They don't have any markings on them. And that's it. Okay? The serial numbers are scratched out. And the gun is, is used from Mexico, and that's it. Okay? Almost nobody uses an illegal gun unless it's stolen from a legal authorized gun user. Sometimes they steal legal guns, then they scratch out the uh, serial numbers, which makes it harder for the police to find who the, bullet, uh, who the gun belongs to. But then they use de uh, evidence of uh, base... I don't know how they do it, but they're able to tell whose gun it is by the way the bullet fires. And that's the reason why um, so many gun crimes are committed is because they use illegal guns. People who do it legally, they don't usually commit crimes. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I've been trying to tell you guys this for a long time, man. I've been trying to tell you guys this for a long time. Every gun has a very specific fire. Do you guys understand better now about guns? Yes or no? Okay, well that's what I've been trying to explain. And if you're wondering what gun I have, it's an uh it's a 22 and it's com it's a compact 22. Do 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 I don't get generic guns either. <laughs> My whole family has guns. We don't get generics. A nine what what brand is it? Mine is a Smith and Wesson. I like Smith and Wesson guns. I, I like the quality of their firearms. Harry Soccer, you're very aggressive. I'll tell you that right now. Very aggressive. No, but what's the brand? What's the brand? You say Glock 22? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's actually a nice gun, dude. Jeez. I don't know. I like Smith & Wesson, though. It takes 40... It's a 40 caliber. Nice. Only weighs 34 ounces. So that's a light gun. Yeah, That's a nice gun, bro. That's a nice Glock, bro. That's a nice gun. That's a, The police use those. They're really good guns. Bro Brody Bear, Brody Mail. Glock 19... 
Nine millimeter. Let me check that out. Oh. Glock 19, there she is right there. Another beautiful gun. It's beautiful. I don't know why everybody hates guns. They're a lot of fun to shoot. Take it to a, a gun range. You guys have a lot of fun with these guns. I don't know what people's problem is. I just don't get it. But I'm a Smith & Wesson person. Cause one of the oldest gun brands in the world. I've always I've always liked Smith & Wesson. Because of how old the company is. They were one of the first companies that made guns. Uh. Excuse me. That's the only reason I take a Smith & Wesson. What do you think about attack dogs? Is it worth it over a gun? Sometimes I do think that attack dogs are good, but at the same time, if they get hurt or if they get shot or stabbed by a human, it makes me really fucking pissed off because I don't think dogs deserve to be uh, dead because of some evil human. So, no. But, honestly, my, my favorite type of gun is a Smith & Wesson. I'm, I'm, a very, I'm a very big fan of Smith & Wesson because... Like I said, they're one of the oldest gun companies in the world, if not the oldest that I know of. I'm not a really big fan of Glocks, but god damn it. You know, they're they're made from an Australia uh, Austria company and they are very reliable guns. Smith and Wesson and Glock are probably the best guns that you can purchase with money because they're extremely reliable. If you need to shoot, it's gonna shoot. It it could be it could be in water and it'll shoot. But like I said, if 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 you guys want to keep talking about this, you know, we can keep talking about guns and how it needs to be taken away from everybody. But at the same time, there's a saying I think on the internet that a lot of people use: when seconds matter, the police are five minutes away. Always remember that. Yes, the police will save your lives, of course. But at the same time, when somebody is breaking into your home and you don't have yourself any protection. How the hell are you going to protect yourself? Somebody's breaking into your shit, bro. These... I, I... Drew, I just... Drew, I just don't... I just don't see Drew's point. Like, he's saying to take everybody's gun away, but at the same time, it's just like... Guns are not meant, you know, for like... Mass shootings and stuff like that. I don't agree with that. Of course. Like, I get that. Okay? A gun is not a gun is for personal protection and it is used for fun. A gun can be a lot of fun if you go shoot the hell out of it at a shooting range, at buckets, I've shot it at watermelons. Um, now the gun that I'm scared of, to be honest with you, I don't like this gun. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I went to go shoot it at a shooting range and it scared the fuck out of me, okay? This gun right here is the scariest gun I've ever shot in my life. And I'm not even going to joke with you. The 44 Magnum scares the fuck out of me. And I don't care what anybody tells me differently. A 44 Magnum scares me to fucking death. That shit gives me an anxiety attack. Shooting that motherfucker. It's very, very... <laughs> <laughs> the 44 Magnum, bro, is just an awesome, awesome gun, but it's, I think it's overkill. It's its more like a, I don't know, it scares the shit out of me, though, man. Do you know how loud a 44 <laughs> Magnum gun is? Like, it's fucking loud. You can hear that bitch for miles if you're in the, if you're in the country. You can hear that bitch like a shotgun for miles. And, of course, Smith & Wesson. Makes the 44 Magnum a beautiful fucking gun. Drew, you don't understand it. <sighs> okay, it's okay. You know, not everybody's going to agree with me, and you know, 
But at the same time, uh, 44 Magnum. That shit is got to be the most powerful handgun I've ever I've ever shot. Alan, I I don't get it though. Like, I just I just don't get Drew's point. Like, he needs to think about the part where somebody's breaking into his house. And 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 357 Magnum. Oh my god. Well, which was more powerful, the 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum? I don't. I'm not too savvy with guns because I don't look into it. I just use it for personal protection. I just use it for personal protection. I'm so I'm not really savvy. I can aim and I can shoot really good, but I'm not really into the gun scene. You know, I only keep it for personal protection. And that's it. 44. Dude, when I shot that 44 Magnum, dude, that shit blew me back. Like I was holding it hard, like hard as I could, and poof! All of a sudden, that fucking recoil, man. Poof! I fucking went back like crazy. It was crazy, man. But I had a lot of fun, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was fucking nuts, though. I'll tell you that. It scared the shit out of me, though. I don't know, man. You want you want to, you don't want to fuck with anybody with a 44 Magnum. <laughs> I wonder I wonder why the police don't use the 44 Magnums anymore. I guess because I guess because they're barrels. I don't know. Maybe because they're revolvers. I don't know. Or pistols. Yeah, you're right. But then again, it probably wouldn't be a good idea for the police to have those anyway because they could reload them fast enough. When you could just take a clip out, put a new clip in, boom, boom, boom. Clip out, clip in, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I just... I don't know, man. I, I won't fuck with a 44 Magnum, no. No, 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 no. I'm good. <laughs> Besides, it doesn't fit in my pocket. <laughs> it doesn't fit on my holster. Oh, uh, besides, they're expensive. I can't even afford a gun like that. Dude, I, I paid almost $500 for the gun that I purchased, but I bought it brand new. I've only shot it four times. I use practice pistols at, like, gun shooting ranges because I don't want to wear mines out. I want to keep mines, like, you know, nice and fresh. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, think, I think people just need to be a little bit more safe. That's what I always say. Gun safe, gun lock, and everything. But... Some people just don't agree. Like, people hate guns. I don't understand why they hate them so much. Yeah, they kill people, but that's not what they're for. I mean, they're for, you know, personal protection. You could be out in the middle of the woods. There's a fucking bear coming. Sometimes you can have to shoot the fucking bear. Or it'll kill you. Do you know how fast those motherfuckers run? I've actually seen a bear in real life. And luckily, it didn't charge after me, though. I was walking in the woods in California near the Sequoia National Forest. And there was a fucking big ass fucking bear. I don't know if it was a Kodiak or a black bear, but that motherfucker was huge. The Epstein? I don't know. I, it's a whole conspiracy. I don't know. I don't think he. I don't think. He, I don't think he killed himself. I'm sorry, but just even even the Democrats are saying this shit. I don't believe he killed himself. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. Let me explain why. The power was cut off to that jail at the time that he killed himself. Very convenient because. Jails have backup power to everything. For the electronic doors, they, they have to be buzzed in. The only way those doors open is through electricity. There are no manual unlocks sometimes. And, and the fastest way, obviously, is to have electricity to open the doors with the buttons. There's no fucking way he committed suicide. He was on suicide watch. He was on suicide watch. No, no. This guy was on suicide watch. This guy had nothing in his, his jail cell but a mat. How the fuck do you kill yourself? With a mat. Makes no sense. Okay? This, 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 he's a multi-billionaire. He's a billionaire dude, okay? Owns his own private land. He's a pedophile and I don't agree with him. And I wish, wish him the worst death possible. But at the same time, he was about to expose the Clinton Foundation. And expose a lot of these multi-billion dollar Democrats. Million dollar politician Democrats. And ever since then... Suddenly everything goes quiet at, at the jail and there's no cameras. Of course. Perfect timing. 
considering that they have backup generators to their backup generators. Most private prisons and state prisons and jails have backup generators to their backup generators. There's no way they could have went without power and cameras. There's no way. I don't believe it. Jails have some of the most sophisticated camera equipment known to man, especially in New York. Where they got all that money, of course they have nice fucking cameras. It is suspicious as hell. That's my opinion. There's no, there is no god dang way that his death was a, a real suicide. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that his death had anything to do with suicide. This guy is a pedophile. Maybe one of the inmates killed him. But for the most part, I think it was some sort of, hey, guys, if you, you know, do this to I, you know, Epstein, you know, we'll pay you secretly under the table a few million dollars, okay? You don't ever have to work another day in your life, okay? We'll make it, we'll make, we'll talk to, we'll talk to certain people to make sure that they don't investigate you. Wink, 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 wink. Come on, you know it's espionage. It's espionage at the end of the day. Come on, guys. Don't be dumb. It's espionage. It's espionage, I'm telling you. Espionage. 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 Practice of spying or using spies typically by governments to obtain political and military. I don't know if it's espionage, then I don't think that's the right word. Well, it infiltrates the government or of another country to learn valuable state. No, it's not espionage. Never mind. That's not the right wording. I'm sorry. So that's not the right word for it, but uh, Harry, I don't understand what your problem is, dude. You need to calm down. Ooh. But anyways, like I said, guys, you know, you know, anxiety is a really big problem in this country and in the world now, and it's getting worse and worse by year. Harry, I, I don't know. Do you have schizophrenia or something? Wait, because I'm starting to think you do at this point. Or you're just a psychotic person. Whoever, I mean, who, who, who knows? Yeah, he's probably he's probably two short strikes of a, of a, of a freaking cord, man. There you go. I'm trying SSRI, but I'm afraid of taking to get dose. What do you mean? What what what, what do you mean, Alexandros? And guys, if you if you do like me, come on, push these like buttons, please. You know, push. We need more like more likes on my videos, okay? That's if you know if you care. I, I need as many likes on my videos as possible because somebody is just mass bombing disliking my videos. Ever since I started uploading stuff with um, with politics, I've been getting a lot of dislikes per video now. Ever since I started uploading stuff about politics. Politics, man, really just piss off a lot of people. Like, If they're on the Democratic side, they just get really mad and they just start dis disliking my videos. Um, I've even had some people that I've had to remove from my channel saying, oh, you're a fucking Republican, you piece of shit. Hope you die. You're a Trump supporter. You're a piece of shit. You're racist. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on with my country where people think that supporting a person is automatically I am a racist. When I've made videos in the past supporting our African American brethren, I am just shocked at the hatefulness in this country right now and in this world. How many people could be so hateful, 
so disrespectful and it just makes me sad because all at the end of the day we're trying to get respect and you know like that guy said on the on, on the breakfast club a few years ago put some respect on my name ever since then i i just wish that more respect would be put on everybody not just uh not mr birdman it's so sad it's really sad just put some respect on my name what the fudge just put some respect on it this 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 thing where everybody seems to hate everybody the world is fucking turning into a a, a dangerous place it's just sad because i know you know at the end of the day that this place is just going to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on it's going to get more controlled there's going to be more censoring of everybody not not just republicans and conservatives it'll be democrats eventually and then eventually the new world order is going to come in and guess what ain't going to have no freedoms left that's what i'm going to say Drew lives in a haunted house. What? I don't know about that. I don't think so. <sighs> Paul M, you are so correct, man. Anxiety is a god dang bitch. It really is. God damn, this battery is huge, bro. Look how big this battery is. This thing is huge. Look how big the battery is. Look how big this motherfucker is. Look at this. <laughs> it's freaking huge. I've never seen... It's like a big AA battery, except it's huge. I just stopped my benzos. All I want to do is sleep. Ruins are... Yep. 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 Yep, you're right. Anxiety is like... I don't know. It's just evil, though. It's just evil. It's evil. That's what it is. This battery is like a big AA battery, except it's like three times the size of a regular AA. It's crazy. But they last forever. These things last forever. Maybe they'll create a 10,000 milliamp version. Who the hell knows? Oh, that's from my tactical light. My flashlight. I have a really nice flashlight. Uh -oh. But anyways, guys. You know, if you guys like me, try to support my channel, okay? You know, if you see a video, push the like button more than the dislike button, because... I don't know, man. Ever since I, ever since I started talking about de uh, politics, I've been getting a lot of dislikes on my videos. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I get a lot of a lot of dislikes lately on each video. They just seem they just don't like me because I I speak I speak with a clear conscience. I try not to speak either for the left or the right. I'm I'm more of a cent republic centrist. I don't know what the hell it is. I do lean a little bit more to the right, but I don't. I don't consider myself a Democrat or Republican. I consider myself like a cent, like middle ground. I look at everything from every other side, and I try to make an opinion out of that one. Uh, and that's why I follow Tim Pool. But I also like Mark Dice. I just don't like the Young Turks. I don't like them because they just push agendas. I don't like the agendas that they push. They don't seem fair and balanced. And I don't like them. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not a fan of, of the Young Turks. They push this agenda of everything is bad. You know, like they say, Orange Man bad or whatever. It's just everything is pushed with them. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like that. Tim Pool tries to be at the even of everybody's wrong. You know, what the good and the bad of everybody. That's why I like his channel. I like uh, Mark Dice because he makes me laugh. Um... But there's other conservative channels like Blaze TV and stuff like that that I like and like to watch. And there's other conservatives. I also do watch some liberals um, to try to get their viewpoint on things. 
But lately, I don't know what's been going on here, man. But a lot of violence in this country, guys. We 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 gotta we gotta be the best that we can, no matter what. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. This has been the Planet Earth here. Try to show me some more love, okay? Instead of hate. Remember, I'm mentally ill. I do have mental issues. So sometimes the videos I upload are very odd, strange. And I'm sorry about that, but that's just how I am. But, you know, that's all I can say. Thank you guys for watching. This has been the Planet Earth here.